Good afternoon, everyone. It's Alan Whitford from RCEuro.com, coming to you from the True London Unconference at the City Hotel in London near the famous Brick Lane. We're in the interview suite of the Unconference, uh, hosted by Jobsite. You'll also find it on JSTN and on live stream. And if you're following us on Twitter, it's the Twitter hashtag TrueLondon. Um, what we're going to talk about today is a bit about what it's like to be here at an Unconference, which for those of you who may not have been to one before, Think about it as a breakout session on steroids. Um, it's all day long schmoozing and no PowerPoints, no presentations, just basically ex exchanging ideas and exchanging content and conversation. And today we've got two leading lights with us we're gonna talk about. Uh, talent communities and beyond. Talent communities and beyond, okay. Uh, in other words, we're just gonna try and figure out what this whole recruiting thing is. It is about talent. Um, John, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm John Sumser. I am. Uh currently running an operation called the HR Examiner at hrexaminer.com. I'm an analyst in HR technology and uh, have been talking about and writing about talent demographics and the intersection of the two with technology for 20 years now. Uh, Lucian? Hi, I'm Lucian Tomaski. I don't have nearly 20 years experience, but uh, I'm founder and CEO of Brave New Talent. Um, we're a social recruiting platform. We build professional talent communities. Uh, what I'm interested in talking about is actually what, what's beyond talent communities, what's beyond the engagement and the recruitment, uh, and talk about the education and skills piece, because I think that's where the real opportunity lies. And John, you've participated in a wide range of types of events and run of events yourself over the years. Uh, what's your take on this unconference format? How you, you know, what, what's your sort of thoughts about that? Well, the, the most interesting thing about an unconference is it tries to gnaw away at the idea that there are experts and then other people. An unconference is a place where, where the expertise of everybody in the room is the starting point assumption. Now it means if you, if you come to something like this, you might be a little overwhelmed by the lack of structure and the spontaneity of the conversations, but what happens is connections between people who actually know stuff instead of talking heads who think stuff um, uh, as the fair of the day. Uh, Lucian, how about you? You've, you've been active in the unconscious since they've started here in, in the UK. Yeah, I think, I think it's actually a wider trend going on and, and in many ways it relates to what we're talking about today. I think that unconferences are they're more participatory. You get more, you get more, more participation um, and you get to actually engage in dialogue and join the conversation rather than being spoken at. And if you take the analogy of a conference as tradition, you've got the speaker, the expert, and then you've got the audience. It's actually very similar to you've got a teacher and then you've got the students. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we're talking about today in many ways is that that model is kind of changing. Uh, and the whole idea of just having a school teacher and the, and the, and the class and the school teacher is um, essentially bringing everybody up to speed, even though everybody's at different abilities and mm -hmm. growing at different their paces. Um, I think conferences are very similar actually because if you go to a conference the person that's uh, least informed in the room to the person that's most informed you're going to have a massive, uh, a massive gap between um, what they're actually going to take away from that conference and I think an unconference you can come and go and you can leave and you can participate, you can say your thing or you can choose not to say your thing if you're not educated enough maybe you can ask, ask a question and be less um, cautious of asking that question. Um, so I, I do think it's a good thing, but I think it's this big mega trend that's going on that things are becoming more peer-to-peer, -peer, more participatory, um, and it's happening on the web as well. We're sharing more. Well, it seems to me your description of some of that activity is exactly what we might think about with talent communities now, isn't it? it it's not just about there's a bunch of names in a database and I'll go find one or many. It is many-to-many. -many. It's peer-to-peer -peer communication. Uh, you know, you, you and I have been talking about communities for more years than we want to think about. Uh, how have you seen that transition, John? Well, I still think that it, that it is it, it is the case that what happens in in the industry is people talk about talent community and what they mean is email list. People talk about uh, peer to peer interaction and what they mean is resume database. And so 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 while there is a trend towards participation and a trend towards interaction. There's a real shortage of people who are community managers and know how to make the people in an email list talk to each other. And there's an even greater shortage of business leaders who think that having their customers talk to each other is a good idea. 
Mm. And I think that's an interesting point. You've just called customers as the business community. Well, and in my view, a candidate as consumer is very much the same thing. The, the candidate is, is often treated as a separate set of thing rather than being treated with the same, perhaps, integration and, in, and interactivity that a customer in that same organization might be treated. Well, but, but, you know, you know, you know that's, it's important to accord candidates more respect than they receive, but they buy less. Than customers do, right? Right, and, and so and, you know, you go, you talk to three hundred candidates, you get one employee. That's a, that is not the same ratio as if you sent them email to buy your book. It's a much lower return on investment that you get when you deal with candidates, and so and so they're not really customers. They they have a return that's somewhat less than a customer when just looked at from that perspective. My view on it is, uh, I think you can look to the relationship that exists between um, consumers and consumer brands mm -hmm. um, and see almost like a crystal ball to where the relationship with candidate and employer might be going. Because um, I think we're, we're going from a world that became very transactional um, because there was so much data online and the job boards um, facilitated a very transactional relationship on a large scale. Um, hence, you talk about 300 candidates. And, and I think that that trend that's happened that now uh, con consumer brands are trying to build relationships. They're building, um, building uh, people that um, follow their brands and, 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 and engage with their brands and that consumer marketing has shifted. Um, I think the same shift is happening in employer brands and that they're trying to build relationships and build engagement. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. The question starts to be, how do you learn how to think about that, right? Because, because the, the recruiter and the hiring manager of today is used to volume transactions, yeah. is used to a process that's like sifting for gold. And in a talent community, because you have to invest more heavily in each member of the talent community, the question is how do you get people to understand that it's not going to be 300, it's going to be 15. Yeah. And those 15, you may still only hire one of them, but you need to invest with a logarithmic difference in those 15 and you need to understand the return on that investment as something broader than an employment return. Yeah. But so it's a, it's a it's a smaller target with a larger investment for a different outcome, um, even though it's the same palette of paint that you were. Yeah, I, I think it goes to what you said earlier about um, about t uh, databases and not talent communities, even though they're quite often branded as that because talent communities are kind of a buzzword that's way overused. Um, and I think that it's those, the, the idea of a talent community to me is if you don't know you're in it as a, as a participant, it's not a talent community. And if there's not two-way interaction, so you call it social recruiting, you can't put the social piece in there unless there's actual two-way interaction, right. is, is, is my opinion on it. Um, and I think there's a lot of uh, misbranding of social recruiting of talent communities of like pushing jobs to Twitter is not social recruiting, it's using a social channel to recruit people. And that's, that's sort of my view of where talent communities are going, and I completely agree with, with the, uh, um, the view that these databases, it's, it's, it's got to move beyond that. Um, but then talking of numbers, um, talent communities, um, which is the ROI they can provide. Um, to me, the important, the important point is it's the quality, it's the relevance, and that if you're starting with the job, um, so if you start a talent community with the with the rec with the vacancy, it's kind of too late. So you've got to start with the talent and, and who you're looking to engage with. In my my opinion, just in terms of if you're looking to engage, um, if you're looking to engage marketing professionals, you don't build a talent community with a marketing with a marketing vacancy. You build it with a, building that community of those professionals. Do you would so, you agree so, with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So 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 part of what you're saying is that is. You, you, you laid out a couple of things that I want to bullet back to you. First thing that you said is you have to build community in advance of hiring requirements, mm -hmm. right? So what you're doing is developing the, the term pipeline and supply chain is overused in recruiting, but what you're building is a live universe of inventory that you can choose from at the time that, that you need to Correct. make things. So, yeah. so you're, you're investing in supply in advance of the requirement so that at the moment the requirement emerges, you can fill it. Correct. Now, the only way that you can do that is by doing effective workforce planning in advance of establishing the community, right? Yeah. So, right? So 
So, and, and there will be any number of people listening to this who are going to go, well, planned economies, look how well that's worked. <laughs> you know, so so what's, what's really important to notice is that the web provides the ability to have numeric and quantitative input and feedback all the time so that, that you don't end up with a five-year plan driving something that gives you a great supply of nails when everybody has shifted to super glue. Mm. You have a workforce plan that's iterative and ongoing and driven by market feedback that allows you to adjust these things as you move and, and this is and moving the conversation on from, from where we were discussing earlier, it, this is where the opportunity to actually develop your talent community comes in. So if you know you've got a talent community of nails but you need super glue, you can actually, if you have a relationship with that community, you can actually say, inform that community that actually the market's shifting towards more super glue and that it should shape themselves that way because the great things about people is nails don't need to remain nails and that they can actually develop their skills as the market shifts. And I think that's one of the big problems that's there in the market. So, so a question that, that I wonder if you've thought about. I, it's always seemed to me that when you get into this terrain, what you're really talking about is a new set of social contracts between employer or employers and worker or potential workers. Because, you know, if you want to tell me what I need to learn, Okay, I'll, I'll take your training, but but you want me to do that for free, or, or are we in this as a partnership together? Am I preparing for a future that we're going to share, and are you going to share the risk with me back here? Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you think that works? So, so to me, I, if you look at the education, is a three trillion dollar industry, and uh -huh. it's being done really, really, really badly. It and, is. Uh, and mm -hmm. in my view, education is very much as we discussed a product of the industrial age. It sure is. Um, and. Yeah. If you if you look at sort of war on talent, et cetera, et cetera, all, 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 all the terms that we hear, um, if you look at who really needs that talent, which is the resource in the highest demand and the shortest supply, most poorly allocated mm -hmm. of all the world's resources ahead of energy, et cetera, if, if, if you want to fix that problem, are we going to leave that in the hands of the current educationists that are kind of allergic to change? Or are we going to, because it has such an important impact on the bottom line um, for businesses, if businesses now with technology can actually leverage talent communities to develop those communities off the payroll, what happens is you're creating a marketplace for education that's free. Now, free education is not uh, universal, right, in terms of, you know, in, if you look at countries like India, the, the number of fresh talent coming into the workplace and, and the way they pay, you know, the, the, the amount of the, they, their biggest outgoing quite often is their education of their children. I think there's a huge opportunity um, with bridging that to just divide and actually leveraging talent community, leveraging social media as a education education platform to distribute skills on a wider scale, and and align with that job prospects and employability skills. And the more skills you gain, the higher you more you get paid. And so if companies can do that with a kind of like a four square, they can give badges. So, you know, you can have the University of IBM, which could give IBM badges, which can make people more employable, but the fact they've done the IBM training program. And, you know, IBM could develop itself into an educational brand as well. Still, as well. still, yeah. there's a customization component there. We'll, 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 yeah, and we want to try and bring this back now right. to the, the talent community, because I know you can only talk about this for five or six hours at a time. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> so we will be, but it is, this really is the talent this community, is the talent community, right? Yeah. Because... because there's a place where beyond the education that I'd acquire as an entrepreneur, as, a, as an individual entrepreneur wanting to, to engage with some company, there's the customization that you require for me to fit into your system. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you, need to, you, the employer, need to start shouldering the risk or I'm not going to train for you. So free might work back here. But, but there's, a, there's a, a corporate university, you pay me to attend your corporate university, yeah. you don't get me to volunteer to go there. Right. And so, so anyhow, we got this big thing, and I know you're right in the middle of it, what's a great first step that you've seen somebody take in, in this direction? An employer or a candidate? An employer. An employer. So, so I give us one quick example, and John will ask you for one to answer your own okay. question. Um, and then 
uh, we need to sort of bring this near to a close because I know sure. we, this show, by the way, could go on for about another four or five days if you wanted it to. Alan, Alan um, knows you all too well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, and, and John has been known to carry on a, a lengthy conversation or two. Just once. Just, Just once, once, yeah. Just, so, so, a so quick example me, I mean, of what some of you think that's really doing it right. Oh. With my view on with Braving Talent is you start with the talent community. So you start with relationships. Once you've established a relationship, you can take that relationship beyond the fluffy brand building engagement. Hey, this is what it's like to work with day, day in the life of mm -hmm. to hire, to, to actually filling jobs, bums on seats. Um, but if you have that relationship, the key is in that relationship to leave that two way more than dialogue, it's multi log. And I think if you have that relationship, you can leverage that relationship and you're missing a trick if you aren't. Uh, preparing through that relationship those people for for working with you and then using the response to that training as a way to hire filter and hire the best people but you are still asking in a cultural particularly in the UK the cultural change of people actually embrace training which as we've seen over a long period of time has disappeared John are you seeing people who have actually taken there, the step there, there in the States there are no example of anybody even thinking about doing this the moment that you start talking about talent communities, people start pumping out emails. Yeah. Um, and, and so, so there's not much question that things are gonna go in this direction, but, but it certainly isn't going to happen as long as there's a surplus in the workforce for available jobs yeah. right now. Well, it'd be great to have you guys join the stream. I'm supposed to lead later on talent communities because usually that track ends up people talking about a database uh -huh. or talking about their Facebook fan page, or talking about the number of people they're connected to on LinkedIn, or the number of people in their job board database. Yeah, this, this, um, it sounds like databases, not communities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd love to carry that conversation Good. on with you. So, so what else are you guys going to be doing here today? John, are you going to jump in a couple tracks again? Yeah, well, well you know, I, I um, never run shy of opinions, so I'll be around All right. um, offering them. But I'm also, one of my projects is to is to define how influence works in this industry in particular. And I'm going to be leading a session tomorrow on what influence is and how you can recognize it and, and some of the approaches to calculating influence that are. And you've got some good examples on the HR Examiner, the top 25 list of different people and their influence. Which yeah, if you go to hrexaminer.com and look at our list dropdown, we, we quantify with algorithms the top 25 influencers in HR, recruiting, talent management, and leadership. Right. And there's been quite a few of the UK people have made that list, which, uh, which is which fantastic. Which was a surprise. was a surprise for all of us, <laughs> too, yeah. <laughs> and Lucian, what are you going to be doing for the next day? You're just, you're just uh, schmoozing, dropping in Schmoozing, I'm always schmoozing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, Braving Talent's a sponsor here, so we're demoing the product. Um, I'm going to be leading a track uh, later. Um, I'm not sure when. Not sure when or where or what. Yeah. Where or what, I'm going to go with the flow, <laughs> but it's going to be something to do with talent communities and social education, so uh, an extension of this conversation, and um, and I'm learning this. I think Bill's done a great job of bringing some some really, some of the best people in the industry from, yeah. from the States here, and we've got friendly faces from, from Blighty. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for watching. Again, True London is the hashtag if you want to check it out there or find us on the streams, and thanks again for JobSite for for bringing us all together here, and uh, thank you guys for joining the unconference video stream. Thanks, Alan. thank you. All right.